Hi everyone, welcome back after the topic test one. It's time for us to resume our syllabus again. And perhaps uh, I will start off by telling you that we are officially done with our first half of unit 3. We are done with the topic of gravity and now is the time to move on to the second half, which is electromagnetism, another big component of unit 3. Electromagnetism, sometimes we call it electricity and magnetism, or we call it ENM, sometimes even we call it electrodynamics. In general, this is a topic that is dealing with all the phenomena regarding electricity and magnetism. First picture here, aurora. And second picture here, lightning. And the third picture here, effect of a magnet. They are all can be described by using a set of law. In the previous topic in gravity, we have Newton's law and we have a law of universal gravitation to describe their motion precisely. Likewise, we do have a set of law that can describe E and M. What are these laws? These are the laws that I'm going to circle here. This set of law, they are collectively called the Maxwell equation, named after uh, Maxwell. You are going to learn a bit about it, not directly, so don't be panicked yet. Yeah, you are not learning in this form. You are going to learn it in a much simpler form. Yeah, just a small chunk of it. So you're going to learn about this in today's video. Now I will proceed by highlighting the content outline as for today's video. Number one here, we are going to define the point charge. What is it actually? And then I'm going to proceed by telling you what is electric field lines, what it does and about the pattern and how do you draw it properly. Yeah, let us start with the definition of a point charge. Point charge here is defined as a particle, any particle having only one unit of charge and all its charge is located at the center. So what we mean by uh, one unit of charge, one unit of charge here, we usually write it as one E. Yeah, and 1e here, it has a magnitude of 1.6 to the power of 10 minus 19 coulomb. Coulomb here is the unit that we use to define or to represent the charge. Alright, so let me say it again. Point charge is a particle that contains only one unit of charge. Very famous example, simple one would be electron and proton. So these are example of point charge particle. Yeah. They're having one unit of charge here. Yeah? In nature, this one unit is the smallest unit possible. It's not possible to split this number even smaller. So this is quantized. It is the smallest number. You cannot find any number smaller than this. All right, now proton and electron both are containing one charge. However, one very important difference is that proton is having a positive polarity and electron is having a negative polarity. All right, and let me give you fact number two. Fact number two is that electrically charged particle will emit electric field lines. A very similar idea with gravity, whereby any object with mass will always emit gravitational field lines. In this case, however, we are talking about electrically charged particle and they are capable of emitting electric field lines. All right, so over here, let me tell you more about the field lines. On the left hand side of the picture here, we have a shape or the pattern of the field lines emitted by the positive charge. As you can see here, the field lines is directed such that it's coming from the center and it goes outwards. And this is what we call as the field lines directed radially outwards. On the other hand, electron or any negative particle will emit field lines such that the field lines will be directed inwards. It comes from very far away and it will goes into the center of the negative charge. So they are not the same here. Yeah? The shape is similar however the direction they are opposite of each other. Take note of that. And what is electric field lines? Electric field lines is a region whereby any electrical charge object will experience force. One example, if I talk about, I'm going to take this picture on the left here. I have few lines over here. 
if I put another charge particle here, let's say a positive charge particle, it will experience force because it will interact with the few lines emitted by the first proton here. So that's the idea of the few lines. In this slide, I'm going to show you the picture of the electric field lines and the magnetic field lines. Electric field lines here is on the left hand side of the slide here, top and bottom. I will start with the top. Configuration A here, I have uh, two negative charge placed next to each other and according to the field lines that they will emit, they will go inside the negative charge. And then the one I'm circling right now, this is a region that the field lines interact such that they are not cancelling each other. They tend to pack each other up and in general this is what we consider as a repulsion force. And on the bottom here I have one positive and one negative. In this case the few lines from positive, it leaves the positive and it goes inside the negatives. So this is how you should draw it if you are being asked to draw one in the exam paper. And at the top here, uh, let me add on by telling you extra. If I'm going to draw a uh, configuration for both positive, you can expect the same pattern with one feature being different is the direction. Direction will be the opposite. That's all. At the bottom here, uh, one positive and one negative. Sometimes we do call them as electric dipoles. Yeah. If I want to compare them with magnetic field lines, they are like a a twin to each other. Let me start off with the picture in configuration A. If I have two negative or two positive, it is very similar or perhaps the same as the magnetic field line for the picture of the magnet at the bottom here. It is same as having two north pole directed towards each other and you can expect a repulsion force. For electric dipole here, it is akin to one north pole and south pole attracting each other. In any way, the few lines, the patterns, they are like twins. But there's one difference. There's one difference here is that magnets, think about it, you will always have north pole and south pole as a pair. Not so in electricity, not so for charged particle. Now let me show you the patterns of several uh, field lines. So number one, we have this. This would be the magnetic field lines coming from the bar magnet. So perhaps you can deduce this one is having a field lines that is repelling each other. And this one will having a uh, field lines attracting each other. Similar to the picture that you had uh, previously. This is for magnetic fields and let me show you how about electric fields. Are they having almost a similar pattern? You will deduce it yourself. Electric field here. I have picture number one, number two and yeah, just look and deduce which one is repulsive, which one is attractive. So this will be talking about two charges over here and then in this picture, I have a single charge and you can see the pattern, it's quite obvious. Lastly, this is what we call as parallel plates, you are going to learn it uh, really soon, not today, however. So the, all of them will have different configuration. So these are the idea of the field lines. Now let me give you a few important notes about the electric field lines. Rule number one is that the denser the field lines, the greater is the electric field. Alright, so let us use the picture on the right side here. I have two green circles with grey shaded area. These two circles are of the same area. And you compare that the circle on the right side here is closer to the charged particle. It's closer, yeah, compared to the circle on the left side. And if you look properly, we have three few lines inside the area of the green circle on the right and only one few line on the area of the circle on the left. What I want to tell you is that the nearer the region to the charged particle, you realize that the few lines they are denser. Like in this case, I have more few lines. So it contains a denser field lines, hence the electric field strength is greater 
if I compare it with the area in number one here. So that's a fact number one. Let me put out a rule here. It's same with the gravitational field lines. The greater the field lines, the denser they are, the stronger is the strength of the field. Rule number two, field lines never cross each other. Yeah, they cannot cross each other. If you are drawing one field lines inside a question, uh, please do not cross them because they are wrong. All right, and number three, uh, fact number three is this. Rule number three, charged particle, um, they are having two functions. Uh, one is the field mediator, they emit field, and also they are involved in electrical interaction. So these are the few important notes about the field lines. All right, the graph over here, um, this graph here is to represent the electric field strength. And of course, as I said just now, if you are closer with the charged particle, you expect the field lines to be stronger. All right, and if you are further away from the field lines, for example, you take this region, you will have weaker field lines. Take note of that. Now let me draw out a quick summary on what they have discussed so far. Uh, number one here, what is point charge? The definition of a point charge is any particle, be it positive or negative, that is containing one single unit of charge, namely 1E. 1E here is magnitude-wise 1.6 to times to the power minus 19 coulomb. Nothing smaller than that. This is the smallest number you can get in terms of charge. And point number two, we have more details here. Number one is what is the shape for the positive and negative point charge? Where is the direction? In general, if you are talking about point charge, let's say I draw a single uh, proton here. I draw a few lines and these are crooked few lines because of my drawing. Direction-wise, they will be radially outwards. And for negative point charge, Example electron, the direction will be inverse, it will be radially inwards. Okay, and then electric field line, what it does? Electric field lines is representing a region that if you place another electrically charged object, let's say I put a negative here, it will experience an electrostatic force because it's interacting with the field. If I'm going to consider the case here, the negative will interact the field and when it's interacting, the field will tell the negative charge here to meet with the positive charge. So that's the purpose of the electric field lines. It dictates how the charge object move. And electric field lines only for charged particle. You cannot just put Mr. Neutron over here. If you put a neutron over here, uh, the neutron will not react at all. You just stay there. All right, because you won't experience any force. All right, so um, this is the idea of the electric field lines. In general, greater or denser the field lines, the greater is the electrostatic force. Electric field lines, they cannot cross each other because they are vectors. For more info, please refer to the textbook. All right, I think that's all for today. Thank you.